we have day of reckoning this coming saturday uh, and by the way we will be doing a live watch along between half eight and nine on saturday night we're gonna go live we're gonna watch this throughout it is gonna be flipping epic i can't wait for this card you know you look at the names you know this is pay-per-view and this is kind of the standard maybe not quite to this extent because the names the fights etc are so good but there's nothing better than the pay-per-view where the top two fights are very good and we have a decent undercard as well which we do have here now i'm doing this preview first because i have to say out of all the fights on the card this for me is the one that i'm most looking forward to which is of course Jarrell big farmer miller versus daniel dynamite dubois it when this was announced it was a real like i was kind of taken aback by it in one sense you know i was like oh my god this is a great fight but in another sense i was like okay you're just coming off the back of a loss to alexander rusek where you know you had moments in there moments and you know ultimately you quit in the ninth round you're going straight in there with miller that could rear up and bite you into you know what and i'm surprised warren is going down that road maybe he's thinking look there's no point trying to rebuild him let's see if he can't go in at the deep end if he can't just go straight back in at the deep end there's no point maybe that's what he's doing maybe he genuinely believes that miller is not the fighter he once was let's see i think it's a real real intriguing fight but before we go and give our picks we go over the tail of the tape we'll start with miller 26 oh and one that one draw was against joey duaco about a decade or so ago there thereabouts he lost points in that fight which is why it was a draw but he's 26 and 0 with 22 knockouts he is six foot four 35 years old 78 inch reach Jarrell miller is a very 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 big man i mean in his last fight which was in march just gone over in dubai he fought lucas brown now lucas brown was 277 pounds in that fight miller was 333 pounds a and he looked an enormous man his fight prior to that was in july of last year 328 pounds he had his comeback fight after his ban which is actually the fight he was the heaviest in 341 pounds this is a a massive guy you know you would have to go right the way back to 2017 2017 is re is the last time he was under well i think anyway the last time he was under 200 or 300 pounds because he fought duapas 304 adam Mech, 317 and bogdan dinu 315 now 300 or 283 pounds is still flipping heavy still heavier than most heavyweights so this is a big guy he seems to think that bigger is better obviously it's not all muscle a lot of it is fat a lot he re but he is absolutely massive so he is going to be the heavier of the two that of which i have absolutely not a shred of doubt in my mind he's probably going to be the stronger of the two as well if we go to daniel dubois 19 and 2 both of those two losses have been by knockout he's only gone the distance once which was against kevin johnson many years ago about four or five years ago now 26 years old six foot five with a 78 inch reach so essentially they're talking with the roughly the same height you know only an inch the difference and the same amount of reach you look at Dubois' resume, the two main fights that stand out are both fights that he lost, which were against Alexander Rusek and Joe Joyce. You look at some of the other names on there, you know, Kevin Johnson lost a bunch of times, Kajanu, really, a, what is he, a gatekeeper? Latte, you know, Latte in that fight didn't look too bad. He came to, to win, he came to fight. Since then, he's shown no heart whatsoever. And then Nathan Gorman, who was unbeaten at the time. That was for a British title. But Nathan Gorman, I mean, he's since gone on to lose to Fabio Wadley. And then in his most recent fight where he looked absolutely awful. He really did, physically and aesthetically. That win has not really aged that well. And obviously, you look at the step-up fights. Joe Joyce, he lost that fight. And again, to Alexander Rusek. Trevor Bryan, again, one of the weaker heavyweights of this current error you know he had a version per se of a title the wba regular but that is daniel dubois resume you look at millers and you know brown at this point not really worth it bracamonte is a tough but he's a journeyman bogdan dinu in 2018 unbeaten at the time bogdan dinu but he's been beaten plenty more times since then adam Eck was a blown up cruiserweight slash light heavyweight johan duapas fresher than he was later on in his career marius vax stopped him 
and obviously Washington. You would say, looking at that, maybe on paper, you might say that um, Adam Eck is his best win, maybe. Because obviously he had, what, four years out of the ring? Yeah, nearly four years out of the ring. Stemming from multiple failed tests. Multiple, not just the one. He's back now. Apparently there is VADA testing in place for this fight. If you're an opponent of Jarrell Miller, you should really insist that there is VADA testing. Because obviously this guy is very disingenuous to say the least. Let's talk about the fight and how I think it will play out. When I look at the Jarrell Miller, who will say fought Thomas Adamek, who fought, say, a Bogdan Dinu, a Johan Duapas, I look at that style, that come forward pressure style where he sets a high volume, which is very rare for a heavyweight, much less a 300 pound heavyweight. You know, you can have smaller heavyweights who can set a high, I think it's that high pace, but they're not going to be able to outman someone who's 6'5", 250 pounds. Jarrell Miller can do that, right? Or at least he could back then. How will he fare now that he's older? Because he is older. He was, he was a lot younger back then. He was in his early 30s. Now he's in his mid-30s. And is apparently clean. How will he fare? If you were talking, as I said, about the Jarrell Miller of 2018, I look at that style and I think, okay, if you can get past Daniel Dubois' power, if you can take it, you really are in a good chance to win that fight. Because Daniel Dubois is someone who... He's capitulated twice now in fights. And when that happens, you do worry, will it happen in the future? Because it's seemingly inevitable. And Jarrell Miller has kind of hinted at that. in the. Pre I know he's a trash talker, he would. But still, when that's happened before, you do wonder. And especially considering it only happened in the previous fight. It's not like we've had a very long length of time to be able for Daniel Dubois to kind of develop, mature, and say, okay, now it's not going to happen again. We've seen him unravel in fights even that he's won, like against Kevin Lorena in that first round. The first shot, yeah, you could say probably did, you know, scramble his senses a little bit. But then he went down voluntarily. And Shane McGuigan really had to push him to go out into that second round. So questionable heart there with Dubois. I see a guy like that who's going to push Dubois back, who is, because Joe Joyce was able to do it. I know he primarily won it on the jab, but it really was man against boy in there. And Dubois is someone who certainly earlier in his career would really ragdoll those guys. He would go in there with guys like Kajanu and just ragdoll them, use his physical strength. He's not going to be able to do that against Jarrell Miller, I don't think anyway. And again, mentally, how is that going to be? How is it going to be when you're hitting this guy and he's not going anywhere? If he can take Daniel Dubois' power, that's the big if. But if he can take it, how is Dubois going to cope mentally with a guy who's able to push him back, who's able to get his shots off on him, who's going to push him onto the back foot? He might not like that. And it might not be that Miller is necessarily hurting Daniel Dubois because Miller doesn't sit down on his shots. He throws a lot of arm punches. He's so big that he's not actually going to be able to really sit down and really get maximum velocity. He's not going to be able to turn into the shots because he's so big. You know, being that size, it actually can, I know it sounds strange, but it can take away from your power if you're so big that you can't act. It's essentially been able to rotate your weight onto the fist. Punching power, hard punching. And if you're not able to physically do that, physically aren't able to do that, you're relying on, you know, just throwing arm punches, the lighter you are, the more power you're going to have. In that scenario, you're going to want to get a compromise. With Miller, it's just bigger is better. Even though those shots might not be hurting Daniel Dubois, mentally is really where we're going to see the crack show and i really look i'll talk more about this in a wee bit but for daniel dubois what i think he needs to do right and people are saying he needs to try and outbox jarell miller i think daniel dubois in that first round needs to go at jarell miller fast he doesn't necessarily need to go in there and try and get an early ko not necessarily if it happens it happens but he needs to go in there and let right hands go big right hands from early because Jarrell Miller defensively he's not Pernell Whitaker you know he's not going to be slipping and sliding with these shots you know it, it's fairly basic defense from Jarrell Miller so he will be able to get tagged definitely if Daniel Dubois because Dubois may be the hardest puncher certainly when you look at Miller's resume Brown yeah he can punch but at this stage in his career is the power really there and even if it is he's so slow you can see those shots coming a mile away. So you have a chance to really kind of, all right, this is coming, brace. Whereas with Dubois, he's not the fastest heavyweight in the world, but I mean, you know, I've seen snails move faster than Lucas Brown, you know, on his best day, you know? So 
these shots will definitely be faster than what Brown came at, came with. And I think Dubois is a harder puncher. So my advice for Daniel Dubois would be hit him hard. Let those right hands go from early in the fight. Try and put Jarrell Miller in his box a bit. We don't know fully how Jarrell Miller will be because we've seen him in the past, again, pre-ban, go 12 rounds, throw a lot of punches and look like he could go another five. But against Lucas Brown, which was a terrible fight, it was a fun fight to watch, but in terms of what both guys were doing, Miller wasn't too, he really wasn't too hard to find in there. And, you know, by the end, I think it was six rounds, by the end of that, he was looking tired. He looked like he felt that workout, where before, pre-ban, you know, obviously, he, he was going to be able to go in there and throw an awful lot of shots. So if Daniel Dubois has a very slow, cumbersome heavyweight who is easy to hit, light him up like a Christmas tree. Daniel Dubois, when he wants to control some good combinations, he can get the uppercut going. The uppercut against Kevin Lorena was a very good punch. His straight right hand is very good. In fact, his jab, Dubois, his straight shots are quite good. His uppercut is not too shabby either. He throws some decent combinations. In terms of his punching power and that, and his attack, his offense, it's not that bad from Daniel Dubois, really. He's a very stiff, robotic, upright heavyweight. He's not the fastest. And obviously, you know, questionable heart as well. Certainly. But if he's able to go in there, really put it on Miller early, put Drell Miller in his box seat, I think Daniel Dubois may be able to at least pick up points, get a bit of a lead. And if Drell Miller is off the juice, if he starts to fatigue, he could tire late. On the flip side, if Drell Miller can take that power... If he's going to be able to come in, push Daniel Dubois back up again the ropes and start hitting him. It's not even, as I said, the, the concussive effect of the shots. If he's hitting you to the body, to the arms, to the head, everything. If he's just throwing shots off you and you physically can't keep him off. It's not just the fact that, you know, obviously, you know, you're like, how do I get this guy off me? Physically, that's got to be draining because you're trying to move around. You're trying to do everything to keep this guy off you. And he's on you like a bad smell and you just can't get him off you. Physically, mentally, that's got to be draining. And for a fighter, again, like a Daniel Dubois, who has capitulated in the past, that's something I worry about. That's why when I look at these two styles, I think, oh boy, we could see some problems for Daniel Dubois if we get a Jarrell Miller that's maybe even 70-80% of the Jarrell Miller who we had in 2018. Ultimately, I have to give a pick on this fight. And it's really one that... I go back and forth a lot on this. It's a really tricky fight for me to pick because in one sense, I look at it and I think, right, if you look at the history of fighters who, especially in Jarrell Miller's case, who failed multiple tests, when they are finally on the straight and narrow, when they do finally you know, go and fight clean, they never tend to be even remotely close to what they used to be. They tend to look a shell of themselves. They really do. And for that, I'm kind of like Dubois. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, that style itself, if he has a good chin that we think he does, if he can still even keep up even half of the work rate, he's going to cause Dubois massive amounts of problems in there. I'm really on the fence with this one, lads. I'm not going to lie. And I don't like sitting on the fence. I obviously like being able to say, look, whether I'm right or wrong, this is my pick, right? But with this one, I'm really struggling here. I'm genuinely really struggling here. My head's telling me Dubois. But that good feeling is telling me that Jarrell Miller is going to stop Daniel Dubois late. And call me crazy, but I'm going to go with Jarrell Miller to stop Daniel Dubois late. Probably by either corner retirement or Dubois voluntarily sits the count out. I don't, I, I'd be amazed if this fight goes to points. Amazed. I'm going with Jarrell Miller to win. And I think he'll stop Daniel Dubois. I think he'll stop him. That's my pick for this fight. I would not... I, I say that, by the way, with no great degree of certainty. Right? As you can obviously tell. No great degree of certainty. But you gave me, say, 10 quid and say, gee, put it on one of these two fighters. I would say, right, fine. Jarrell Miller to stop Daniel Dubois late. Between rounds 9 to 12. In around that ballpark. That's my pick for this fight. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. You know, this fight right here would main event any Queensbury show, no questions asked. You probably put it in the OVO. Maybe a bit too big as the O2, but you could easily do the OVO 
it would make mince meat of the copper box places like that so it's a big fight and it's not even a main event it's not even co-main event on this card in fact it might not even be turned from the end they might put bivol arthur on ahead of this i wouldn't i know it's a world title fight but i would have this before the two main events to be honest with you it's just such a good fight such an intriguing fight my pick for this fight Jarrell miller to win this fight stoppage late interesting one let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed the video people obviously we have wilder and joshua we got to talk about them they will be coming tomorrow have no fear of that i hope you enjoyed it for now lads smash the like button if you could hit subscribe of course if you haven't already for now as last is, i'll leave you with that peace